This is a little bit low for me, but it goes like this. I started, when I remember, it was about third grade, third or fourth grade, I suppose. And my father was an amateur percussionist, and so he was my first teacher. He knew that I had to expand the kind of lessons I was getting, and he couldn't do that. So he found me a teacher who was in the area, and uh, my parents were really encouraging all the time. Even when I decided that I wanted to go into music, they directed me and you know exposed me to a lot of musical situations. My father used to take us to jazz concerts. He kind of thought pretty outside the box as a, as a parent. My main job is uh, as principal percussion in the Pittsburgh Symphony. I've been playing with Pittsburgh 26 years. Before I got the Pittsburgh Symphony job, my two auditions before that, I was a finalist. And one was the Chicago Symphony and one was the Cleveland Orchestra. And I thought, I must be doing something right. I think I auditioned 11 or 15 times before I got the job in the Pittsburgh Symphony. I kept figuring things out and I, and I didn't want to quit. I just knew this is what I wanted to do. We play about 130 concerts a year. Most of them are in Heinz Hall and they involve classical subscriptions, pops concerts, uh, a lot of educational concerts. And then we play out in the community quite a bit too. And then usually each year we tour internationally. And so when we tour, we're, we're kind of ambassadors for the city. And it also just keeps the orchestra in the international eye, I guess, of you know, music lovers. In this space here, I actually make drums and drumsticks. This is a business, it's called Drummer Service. It's a business I inherited from my father and he did it for about 34 years. I grew up and I would help a little bit and I learned some of the things. Uh, when he passed uh, in 2007, I took it over completely, but of course I was out here in Pittsburgh, the shop was back in Lancaster County. I was able to find a place out here and move it, but because he inherited the business from Charles Soisman, there was already a reputation there, and so my dad just built upon that, and that's basically what I've done, making the drums and uh, making the drumsticks. and they're all custom drums. I make every single part of them, bending the shells, bending the woods, steam bending solid wood hoops, tucking calfskin heads, doing all the leather work uh, on the ears. There are reproduction drums, but I also do make modern drums. Uh, on occasion, I restore some of the old drums, which is another thing I really enjoy about this business. So this was actually made by Soisman in 1972 uh, for me, and we call this the Grand Republic. It's, a, it's an emblazonment of the seal of the United States on here. Drums used to be tensioned with rope here and these leather ears, and when you pull these leather ears down, it squeezes the rope and it pulls the red hoops together, and that's how you get the heads tight so you can play it. These drums I just imagine, you know, I get to hold it and take it apart and fix it and put it back together. And the stories that they must have, it's really intriguing to me and it's fascinating. I have different ring patterns on the drumsticks and the way I match them, we were the first to do that. We match them by pitch, weight, and color, uh, the three-step matching process. When I go to match a pair of drumsticks to send to somebody, I will look at the color of the drumsticks. They each have the same similar markings, heartwood and sapwood. So visually, 
That's one criteria we use. We also weigh each of the drumsticks uh, as soon as we're finished, and I weigh them to grams, and I, and I allow a very low tolerance for a pair of drumsticks. And then the last way is pitch, and I have a special block I actually uh, tap with sticks on. I'll use two sticks that ring with the same pitch, and the people who use these, you know, want them to be pretty much perfect. We do make several models of drumsticks we call, like the Abel Concert, who was one of my uh, teachers. We have a few of them that are named after players. Those were important people to my either my father or myself. I look back now and I think, okay, these people cared, you know, about young people and, and giving back something. That's why like when we've named a stick after somebody, yeah, they've all been performers, but more importantly, they've been real dedicated teachers. The drummer service, um, it's been going on over a century. <laughs> uh, so I, I do want to see this business go on. And as far as my career, playing with the Pittsburgh Symphony, it's been Fantastic, I love my job. You know, I get to play music for a living and to, to be around that creativity and all those great players and hear those great sounds, it's very rewarding. You have to love, you know, what you're trying to pursue and where, where you think you, you want to see yourself. It's just like realizing who you are and how that can be expressed in what you want to do or what you want to create. Even if you're reading notes that someone else created, you still have to bring them to life. You can make it connect with the audience. Often they want some kind of emotional experience or they want to be remembered somehow. I suppose that's the way it is with the pursuit of art. And it's the kind of thing like it could be so powerful that will just linger with you. You go do your mundane stuff the next day, but you still can have that image in your head and think, oh my gosh, you know, I saw that.